Let's stand for the reading of God's holy word. Welcome to all. To the Onward Christian Soldiers Discipleship Class. This is Onward Christian Soldiers Discipleship Class 222. 222. Our key verse, our foundational verse that we started with uh, many, many weeks ago is 1 Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13 the Bible reads there have no temptation taken you but such as is common to man but God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Our lesson today is titled, How to Overcome Temptation, Part 98. And we're dealing with one of the deadly sins, dual sins of anger and wrath. And I want you to look at Psalm 37 verses 1 through 9 as we deal with that uh, mini series within a series. The Bible reads, for context, we want to include this Fret not thyself because of evil doers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Stop lusting after what evil doers are about and what they're doing. Don't worry your little head because of evil doers. God is showing us here that there are evil doers in the world, contrary to what some people think and believe. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass. All evildoers will be cut down like the grass. God's lawnmower will cut them down, if you will, and wither as the green herb. Don't you worry about a thing. Don't, don't. Come forward. Trust in the Lord. And do good. And as I told someone this morning, that's the choice you have to make. To trust in the Lord and do the right thing, regardless of what other people are doing. And you will find that you have evildoers in your family, evildoers in your classroom, evildoers in your school, evildoers in your church, evildoers on your job. Do not go with them. Trust in the Lord and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily, truly, thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. See, this is what God is saying to you. You don't have to get what you want by doing evil. You can get it, you can get it God's way, but it has to be in God's timing. And when God feels that you're ready, delight yourself. Also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of your heart. Amen, somebody. That means you, you need to love the Lord back and enjoy serving him and do it cheerfully and joyfully. And God will give you all of the desires of your heart the right way. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. God will bring that big dream, that big vision to pass. If you 
serve Him by delighting yourself in Him. And He shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. And also, verse 8, cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil, in any way to do evil. For evildoers shall be cut off but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Holy Father God, we are weak and feeble today, but we know that you are strong and mighty. And our trust and our faith is in you. And Lord, we thank you for what you have already done. And Lord, I pray now that you would do it one more time. And... Uh, Grant me your grace, your strength, and the power of your Holy Spirit to preach and to teach your Holy Word. And we pray that uh, Christians would be encouraged and strengthened to overcome the temptation of becoming angry and wrathful, which you're not pleased with. Uh, to avoid that altogether so that they can live the good life of peace and joy. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. And for his sake, amen. You may be seated. Bring it back this way, son. Ladies and gentlemen, from this passage, we have looked at how God tells us that the power is in our hands to cease from anger and forsake wrath, and God expects us to do just that. For millions of folk have been killed over uh, because of anger and wrath and some people right now are in jail and they cannot believe it because they did something in a moment of anger and wrath our behavior is something that we have control over and some of us even here some of us out there, we foolishly act like we don't. We say stupid things like, that's just the way I am. You have to accept me. Married. Well, get used to it. Because that's how I roll. And looking like a demon out of hell. Angry as hell. Full of wrath and venom. We are not subject to the whims of emotions. No matter how strong those whims might be. And if we have the Holy Spirit of God in our lives... And as believers, we should have him in our lives. We will have him in our lives. We do have him in our lives. However, we can quench the spirit and grieve the spirit by being... None of us should step so low to let a devilish person, a rebellious person, a evil person bring us down to their level. To get us to the point of anger and wrath where we cannot even function and do what God wants us to do. Your greatest revenge on evil people and provokers 
and uh, liars and disobedient, stubborn people is to not get angry at all, but to deal with them in a very calm, straightforward fashion. At the same time, letting them know that they're not going to have their way. And so, ladies and gentlemen, he will help us by the power of his Holy Spirit to cease from uh, anger and forsake wrath. The Holy Spirit in you will help you to do that. Does not mean you cannot get angry about stuff as we talked about last week uh, that is not right. People in your family, people in your church, people in your business, knowing what they ought to do but are not doing it. Uh, you need, in fact, we need more fathers who get angry but sin not. We need more fathers uh, to get angry about the sin in their family. More husbands to get angry about the sin uh, that uh, is in their wife that's causing problems in the family. We need more bosses and more coaches to get angry uh, and uh, display that and show that without getting wrathful and committing sin. One uh, clever coach uh, said on Friday a very painful and insulting remark, rebuke, to a running back on his team. He basically said he did not block. Data that if he would learn how to block, he'll go to the NFL one day. Uh, well, guess what happened yesterday? He went out there and blocked for somebody, and that person not only ran for the touchdown, but ran for the winning touchdown. Sometimes you have to, you have to say some harsh things and rebuke people harshly and chastise people harshly they may think you're angry, uh, and they can think whatever, but you know what you have to do to bring about some change. And they'll try to get up in your face and say, oh, you're angry, you're being wrathful, and that's not the case at all. They can say whatever they want. But you got to deal with this situation. Otherwise, you're going to have constant hell in your family, constant hell in your church, constant hell on the job, constant hell in your business, constant hell on your team. Uh, the great uh, uh, Lyman, uh, Michael Strayhorn, he hated his last coach. He was getting ready to quit. And I forget his last coach's name. I'm sure many of you football uh, people, you know the guy's name. But he hated, I mean, he said he hated this coach with a passion. He hated his guts because he was a disciplinarian type coach. He, as far as he was concerned, late to the meeting was not uh, at 1 o'clock, but if the meeting was set for 1 o'clock, it was, you were late at 12.55, and he would fine you, he would punish you by docking your pay. The team management gave him that that prerogative and he would dock you a thousand dollars three thousand dollars out of your pay five hundred dollars out of your pay each week if you were late to the meeting he didn't tolerate that Michael Strahan who had already become a star and, but he had not won a Super Bowl and he won, won a Super Bowl that's why he came back and he is so happy he came back because under this hard-nosed disciplinarian coach, they won their first Super Bowl. And now he says he loves that man almost as much as his father. He has such an impact upon his life. Michael Strahan. And he was a hard-nosed, and he'll get in your face. And he'll fuss you and cuss you and everything else to get you to do what he wants you to do. And they were able to get a, a Super Bowl win because of that. And he went out a champion. And now he's living the good life, doing some fun stuff that no one, not even he, thought he would be doing. 
He doesn't fit the mold, but he's doing it and people love him. And so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we do need more people getting angry. Our government and our uh, and social services and our psychology friends have have uh, taken a bite out of some people and and they, they they told them they ought not to express any kind of anger. That's just a lie. That's not right. That's not healthy. It's not good. And that's why we get we get we get so many blow-ups, major blow-ups. One is happening right now as I am speaking. The husband never gets angry, never expresses what he feels his wife is doing wrong, never tells his children what he's doing wrong, and what happens? He blow, he just loses it, blows up 13 years into the marriage and in the family, chokes the wife to death, throws his precious little children down in an oil tank. Are you kidding me, people? Somebody needs to get angry much earlier and express it in a positive way. You, you can get angry, but don't sin. Deal with the issue. Because if you don't get angry and, and, and deal with the issue in the proper fashion, you're going to end up continuing to get angry. You're going to stay angry. You're gonna, that, that anger is going to turn into bitterness, and you're going to have a big old nasty blow-up. Either it's going to be a nasty divorce or worse. So... Poke a big needle in that balloon before it blows up. And I've seen this uh, in the past in my original family, not my family, my uh, immediate family, but in my original family, my dear dad. I love him. He was a good man. He tried to do the right thing. He never had a father. Uh, he was never taught that love was uh, uh, had to be tough sometimes with his wife and with his children. All kinds of hell broke out in the family because uh, he loved us too much. He loved us in the wrong way. Now, he loved us, and there's no doubt about it, because he put up with a whole bunch of, excuse me, a bunch of crap for many, many years. And he, he kept that marriage together, that family together. Uh, but a whole lot of hell came out of that loving us too much in the wrong way. My dad should have got angry with me one time, and he scared the hell out of me. And if he had done that two or three times, I would have been straightened out, and I would have, uh, I would have avoided a whole lot of mess that I got into. My dad got angry one time; he exploded. I was in the bathroom. We only had one bathroom back in those days. And I was in the bathroom getting ready to go out to the club, prettying myself up, trying to be cool and everything. And there was an issue about the car. It was his car. So there should not have been an issue. I wanted to use the car. And he didn't want me to use the car because I was playing the music too loud. And he was a reverend and everything. I said, well, uh, you know, I was talking back through the door. Had the door locked. I thought I was safe. I was running my mouth. Well, you know, I just need the car because I need to go out to the club. I told the fellas I'm coming by and I, I got to drop them off and I pick up a girl, you know. Da, 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 da. All before I, while I was running off at the mouth and talking my little behind off, and I'm talking about little. I, I, I know I didn't weigh no more than 95 pounds, 100 pounds, 120 pounds, if that. My dad weighed 300 plus. 300 plus, a big old man. Man, I had that lock on the door. I thought I was all right. Before I know it, my dad, as the kids say today, was in my grill, all up in my grill, in the bathroom. And I'm backing up, falling down into the tub. I said, what is going on? I'm going to die tonight. That's the only time my, God, my, 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 my dad got angry with me. He never, he should have got angry with me many, many times. How he did it, I don't know. That's one of the reasons why I know I'm going to see my dad in heaven. I know. I know I'm going to see my dad in heaven. I know only Jesus can give you that kind of patience. But he should have. But see, sadly, my dad never whipped my behind. He never popped me upside my head. 
He loved me too much. He didn't realize that love must be tough sometimes. And, I, and, and that kind of tough love would have kept me back from doing a whole lot of evil things. He just didn't know any better. And from his, from his life, I learned not to do that with my wife or with my children. That is not the way to love your family. Right now, I have two daughters who are raised in my home by me, by, the, by myself. My wife did not help me raise these children as she should have. I raised them. And I have two beautiful daughters right now who are missionaries and serving in uh, uh, a growing church, and, uh, and they are missionaries. And was it always pretty raising them? No. I had to be rather harsh with them sometimes. I had to teach them and tell them uh, that um, uh, you ought to be cheerful and joyful regardless of how things might be going. I had to deal with them about their attitudes. Yes, I had to chastise them. That means whip their behinds. But both of them on their own not only got uh, multiple degrees, my oldest daughter got two bachelors and two masters. My second oldest daughter has her bachelors and masters. They've been working and taking care of themselves and not only that, they have supported me in the ministry since they have been gone. I can call either one of them right now. If I needed something, they'll, they'll make sure I get it as quickly as possible. And they have been to the mission field and are going to the mission field. I have one going to the mission field uh, uh, in a few days. And we have the privilege of supporting her as she has supported us. So how did it get like that, preacher? I had to whip some behinds. I had to show some anger, but not sin. I had to rebuke. And anybody who's raised daughters, you know, it's, it's no, it's, 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 that can be tougher than raising boys sometimes. With their attitudes and their little mood swings and all of that. But be that as it may, the next phrase also tells us that not being angry or wrathful is a choice. There's a good kind of anger that is not wrathful. It, it does not cause you to sin, but there's a bad kind of anger. It's similar to one person who can drink a glass of wine or two glasses of wine and man they just mellow out and calm and they can be and they just mellow yellow and they just go to sleep and they as sweet as they can be but you got some people who drink alcohol and they should never drink it and they have a tendency to get argumentative and angry I had an uncle like that he would get to drinking and man he would turn into another person and People like that ought not to touch a drop of it. The same thing with this anger. The good kind of anger. Listen to me very carefully. The good kind of anger will bring out the results that I have with my two daughters. And all of my children are serving God right now as I speak. Every last one of them that I raised are serving God. And serving God with me in the ministry. And I give God the glory, praise, and honor. And one of the reasons why, because they know Papa does not play. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Whether you save the Lord, you're going to serve the Lord. Look crazy. You can look nutty. Or whatever. Or whatever. You can try to, try to show some little uh, demonic face to me or whatever. I'm going to tell you behind up. We're going to deal with it. And, I, and, and they know I'll tell her, I... I, I'm not my dad. I'm not Daniel White Jr. I'm Daniel White the third, and uh, I can show you better than I can tell you. And I don't let my wife uh, have her way and get away with uh, her evil and her foolishness, because that impacts the children. 
but I don't do it in anger, uh, in a negative way, or with uh, wrath and sin. And, uh, uh, and there's a difference. Scripture says, fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. The English word fret is translated from the Hebrew word kahara. It means to glow or grow warm. Uh, when a Negro is sitting in his chair, he says, I'm going warm of him, going warm. <laughs> you, better, <laughs> you better shut up. <laughs> you better shut up. Every now and then, my dad, would, he would rise up, he would grow warm, and he would tell my, my mother, Shirley, he would holler from the living room, from the chair. She'd be in the kitchen, running off at the mouth. And he would get so tired, he would put his laundry door and cookies down and say, Shirley! Shirley! Don't let your mouth cause you to write a check your butt can't pay. <laughs> He was in another line. He was in, Shirley, Shirley, don't let your mouth get you behind in trouble now. <laughs> he would say that, but that's all he'll do, as far as he went. My mother was uh, a, a beautiful black woman, but uh, mixed with, uh, uh, what's that Indian down in? Uh, Appalachi, Appalachia. Uh, tribe Indian. And that's a bad mixture. Because Shirley White could show out too with her mouth. And uh, she could talk faster than my father could think. And she would out talk my dad. And he would just go head on and and uh, sink down into his chair and pop another laundry door in his mouth. So every now and then he would get warm. I'm getting warm in here. It means to glow or grow warm. To blaze up with anger, zeal, or jealousy, or rage. To burn, to be displeased, to wax hot, to be incensed. Uh, Justice Kavanaugh said that when he was going to go to that second hearing, he was going to be, I think, incandescent. That's, that, that could be thrown up in here. I said, incandescent? What a word. What are you talking That means he's going to be lit up. <laughs> he's going to be warm. <laughs> he's going to be fired up, and he was. To kindle and to be wroth. Many of us know how it feels to be uh, displeased to feel anger slowly growing inside of us. And there are some, before the anger gets bad, you, you need to go somewhere. You might need to go to the ice cream parlor. Uh, you might need to go down to the 7-Eleven get you a slushy to cool down. And you might need to go, not in the house, to a gym to go take a cold shower. You need to go for a long walk, maybe 13 miles. In a hurry. Don't do like my dear white brethren and find a cement wall and bury your fist in it. Don't do that. But you might need to get away for a while. You might need to hop a plane and go to Hawaii and just get away from it before something happens. Because see, see this, this thing regarding anger is a very serious matter. Many, many people got angry, got heated, got overheated, which blew their, and they what? Blew their top. That means they, they, they temporarily lost their mind and they'll do something in that temporary losing of the mindness that they will regret forever and have done so in the heat of the moment. People have lost their mind. They blacked out. I think there's a television show, I can't remember the name of it, it's mainly concerning women who just lose it. Uh, maybe the title is Lost It, I don't know. But it means that uh, they, they, they just riled up and just 
uh, did something terrible to their husband or to their child and uh, and it's connected to this heating up to the point of blowing your top uh, God does not want you to do that God wants you to be always all bets are off if the person is lost but if you're saved you have the grace and the power of the Holy Spirit to control you and I'm here to tell you my beloved you hear me well on this the greatest revenge you can get on people is to let it go they want to get all up in your face and be angry with you and call you everything but a child of God is best and lie on you have you ever had anybody lie on you just don't just let it go that's your greatest revenge your greatest revenge sometimes is not to say anything. You might be warm. You might be heated up. That's what they're trying to do. So many black men fall into this trap. Most white police officers and most white people know there are some buttons that you can push on a black man. And, uh, and, and if you push them right, you can get them all riled up and angry real quick. And uh, then you can do anything you want. You can arrest them. You can call the police on them. That's exactly what they want you to do. They'll follow you around. Police will follow you around. You don't like it. You get you get warm. You get you get angry. You stop the car and get out. What you want, man? What you want? Yeah, okay, all right. Then just turn your hands. Put your hands in your back. I'll tell you what I want. You, there was not, I wasn't going to do anything until you jumped out of the car in this threatening posture. You must be crazy. So we're going to go and take you downtown to find out what's going on. You guilty about something? See, they, they got you. And they, and they get young black men like this all the time. Yeah, 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 you, you are uh, following me while black. Profiling me. I haven't done anything wrong. Just because I'm black. Driving a nice car. And I got an earring in my ear. And a hood on my head. In my own car. Yeah, by the way. Why you got the hood on your head in your own car? You must be up to something. Get out. Okay. See. And so. Uh, and boom. There you go. Front page of the newspaper. In jail. For nothing. Some uh, many men get into trouble with their significant other, hopefully a female, because she too knows how to push those buttons, and she pushes and pushes those buttons, right away. and she does not weigh no more than 85 pounds, 90 pounds, 100 pounds at that, driven wet. You weigh 225. You played on the football team, but she she can push them buttons, Jack. You don't believe? Read the newspaper today. And look how many men, many of them black men, in a mess because a woman pushed some buttons. And they went off on the woman and beat her like a man. She got two black eyes, a knot on her head, blood streaming down her face, broken arm. Happens every day. White men too. Oh, I mean, it makes no difference. But I, I'm just saying, in many cases, how uh, some young black men get into trouble. There's a good number of young black men who are athletes who are in trouble right now, messing around with somebody, and uh, she's jealous. She's mad. She's trying to get him all wound up and tied down. And it's not working out. And, and she pushes some buttons and zip, bam, boom. He's in jail for nothing. Anger. 
and sinning while angry is getting a whole lot of folk in trouble. We all know that there are some women who lie on men. We all know that. And more and more women, thank God, are realizing that. And the worst thing a woman can get is a female judge. Because she's going to be on you. You young women lying on men and so forth. Be that as it may, the feeling itself uh, is not condemned. However, Scripture does tell us that we should not allow that feeling, uh, that emotion of anger, to lead us to sin. Feelings of anger or displeasure should not in any wise, any way, in any case, or any how, or any situation lead us to do evil. Evil is the action that could follow from our emotions, our feelings. The Hebrew word translated as evil means to do a, an injury or hurt to another. Uh, to do wickedly or mischievously. To intentionally hurt somebody out of your anger. Not chastise somebody, not rebuke somebody and you're under control. But to hurt them physically or otherwise. Psalm 37 8 is basically the Old Testament version of be ye angry and sin not. Why? Because when we let our anger lead us to sin, it often has unintended consequences. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, there are some. Women, men, you ought not to marry. And there's some men, women, you ought not to marry. You'll be better off pushing those buttons before you walk down the aisle. Because you might be marrying an angry axe murderer. Uh, potential angry axe murderer. Somebody who will choke you to death while you're sleeping and then drop you in a vat of oil but yet smiling and grinning the whole time in your marriage and family life on Instagram and on Facebook. That's why you folks need to stop believing these lies people be telling you. It's not like that. Even in Christian families, it's not like that. I'm so glad that Dr. Uh, Moore, I forget his first name. What's his first name? Say it again. Dr. Russell Moore wrote a book on the lies people tell about their Christian families, on how wonderful they are, and they're not. He called them the prosperity gospel families. Everything is supposed to be wonderful all of the time. It's not, my dear friend. Do you think the devil is going to let your family... Be wonderful and dandy all the time. It's going to be a fight and a battle. And there is a fight and a battle as I have taught for many years. In the home first. And so in closing ladies and gentlemen. In the spring of 1894. The Baltimore Orioles went to Boston to play a routine baseball game. In the course of the game. Baltimore's John McGraw got upset with the Boston third baseman. He got angry. They started fighting each other. Similar to uh, McGregor and Habdid or whatever his name is. Last night, some unintended consequences happened last night. People jumping in the ring and out of the ring. Bopping each other upside the head when the fight was over. Anyway, they were fighting. They were going after it. And within minutes, all the players from both teams had joined in the brawl. And, and to use a term that they have used since, they cleared the bench. The warfare between the two quickly spread to the stands. Among the fans, the conflict went from bad to worse, as it did with uh, McGregor and the guy last night from uh, Russia. 
By the way, Putin was so proud. Someone set fire to the stands and the entire ballpark burned to the ground over just one man getting angry. Then the fire spread to 107 other Boston buildings as well. Not only does anger often lead to wrath and unintended consequences, but this passage informs us, ladies and gentlemen, that punishment from God's from God awaits us if we let our anger lead to evil actions. Verse 9 says, Evil doers shall be cut off. For the Israelites being cut off meant being separated from God's blessings. And that's a terrible thing. And if we do evil, stemming from anger, and this includes, by the way, passive-aggressive wrath, well, that's a whole nother subject. The invisible anger of someone uh, who may not have the authority or the upper hand. They practice passive-aggressive wrath. They spit in your food. They'll bring it to you oh so humbly, but they just spit in your food. Uh, they'll spit in your drink. They'll bring it to you oh so sweetly, but they know they spit in your drink. It's like a man who was uh, working in uh, the concession stand at a Major League Baseball field. This devilish person, this people would order pizzas, and this devilish individual would would lick the pizza dough before he no he would spit on the pizza dough before he put the sauce and stuff on to make sure the innocent people would sink their teeth in his spit he was a black man that's evil as hell passive aggressive anger passive aggressive wrath these people who uh, you have some in the church get mad at the pastor and they think they're going to get back at the pastor they're trying to get back at God's work and they have caused the choir to go awry and look embarrassed and humiliated uh, they'll, uh, they'll mess up something in the technology the pastor's preaching his heart out and nobody can hear him uh, because they cut off the mic uh, they put, pushed it in a little ways and pulled it out. Pastor preaches his heart out. He thinks it's recorded audio and video. And the technician who was mad and he's hot, he's heated at the pastor, didn't record it. And either way, passive aggressive wrath and sin. Wives who are mad at their husbands, so they passive aggressively try to whore around and flirt with somebody in the church just to get back at the husband, not realizing unintended consequences can happen and have have happened. And there are some little weak husbands who have done the same to get back at their wives. And so, ladies and gentlemen, if, if we do evil stemming from anger or otherwise, we will be cut off from the blessings of God as well. We will not experience and have the blessings of God. And so, if you struggle with anger or wrath, take this passage to heart, take this message to heart, and begin to use it the next time you face that temptation. Let's pray. Let's all stand and pray. Holy Father God, we praise you and we thank you for your holy word, your holy spirit, and your making it uh, come alive and be real to the hearts and minds, souls, and spirits of your people here and people all around the globe. And Lord, through the multiple streams we have going out of here, and Lord, we pray that you will help us as Christians 
to confess and repent of the sin of anger that causes us to sin. And then, Lord, at the same time, some of us need to confess and repent of the sin of not getting angry enough to bring about righteousness and holiness in our families and in our churches and what have what uh, what have you. And so, Holy Father God, we pray, save those who are lost, revive those who are saved. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done today. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior in the free pardon of your sins, Jesus Christ said in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. <coughs> the Bible says in Romans 10.9, You shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart, your heart, that God hath raised him from the dead, thou, you, shall be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Dear friend, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe that he suffered, he bled, and he died on the cross for your sins, was buried, and rose from the dead. By the power of God, Jesus Christ paid your sin debt, and he paid mine. I don't know why, that's why we sing the song. I don't know why Jesus loved me, but we thank God he did. And with that salvation from the punishment of sin in hell comes a life of purpose, a life of joy, if you want it, a life of peace, a life of victory. Not perfection, but a life of blessing. And I recommend it to you. I've been living it for 40 years. Even if I went to hell, I would not trade living my life for Christ, and that's a fact. And I deserve hell. I deserved hell before I got saved, and I still deserve hell. I deserve hell since I've been saved. And we all deserve hell. And we all should know that. But God does not want us to go to hell. He wants us to go to heaven, so He sent His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer, bleed, and die on the cross for your sins. And, and he rose again on the third day. And all you have to do is put your faith and trust in him. And I uh, would count it a privilege to pray with you uh, and help you to pray the sinner's prayer. Repeat after me, phrase by phrase, if you want to be saved today, believing in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ. Repeat after me. Holy Father God, I pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ I acknowledge that I am a sinner and that I have done evil in your sight. I have broken your Ten Commandments. I have lied before, I have stolen before, I have dishonored my parents, I have taken your holy name in vain, and many other sins. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of all of my sins. 
as I now believe with all of my heart in the Lord Jesus Christ. That he died for my sins, was buried, and rose again. That he paid my sin debt. Lord Jesus, I believe in you. Please come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and save my soul. And change my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. And help me to repent of my sins past. And to turn from my evil ways. And to follow you in the new life. In Jesus Christ's name I pray and for his sake. Amen. Now, dear friend of mine, if you just trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you prayed that prayer with me and meant it from your heart, I declare to you that based upon the Word of God, you are now saved from hell and you're on your way to heaven. Welcome to the family of God, dear friend. I want to congratulate you on doing the most important thing in life, and that is believing on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information... Uh, to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ. Come and read my pamphlet, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Until next time, my beloved, may the Lord bless you and keep you, is my prayer. Let's all stand for our close.